Some of these books disappointed me even more so than 2020 did. Hello everybody, I'm Kat, and today I'm going to talk about the books that disappointed me most in 2020. You know, this video is actually one that it kind of depends on the year, if I want to film it or not. When I first started my channel, I never wanted to film a negative video talking about books, but the longer I've had my channel, the more I've realized I just need to vent about certain books. I just need to get my anger out. Now, this video is titled Disappointments, meaning that some of these books actually have like okay ratings, like we're talking three three and a half star three stars is not at all a bad rating but these books just had aspects in the story that disappointed me and it wasn't what I was looking for from the story if that makes any sense I know in the past I've had books on this list that I've given like four stars to they disappointed me because I wanted them to be five star you're gonna get a wide range of books in this video books that I gave like three and a half stars to which is not at all a bad rating you're also gonna see a book that I've given the lowest rating to in my entire YouTube YouTube channel in my entire time on Goodreads because I've been on Goodreads longer than I've had my channel. In 2020, I actually gave a book the lowest rating I ever have out of any book I've ever read. So you're going to see a wide range of books here, but that's besides the point. Disclaimer, if any of these books are your favorite book of all time, that's great. I feel bad because I didn't enjoy it. Just because I didn't like something doesn't mean you can't, you know, at the end of the day, we're all entitled to our own opinion. So much like my favorites, these books are listed in the order that I read them. I have two books on here that are tied as kind of my least favorite of the year. When I get to those, you'll know. So the first book I'm going to talk about is Scarlet Epstein Hates It Here by... I actually don't know the author's name. I've had this book since honestly, I think I started my channel. I'm not even gonna lie. I decided to pick it up for a readathon. Like around this time last year, I just decided, oh, I'm gonna pick this up. I'm gonna read it. It'll be fine. I only made it to like page 84 and I had to DNF it because it was so weird. This book follows this girl named Scarlet. She's a very bratty character, despite the fact her like familial circumstances aren't very good. It's not like we're talking about the daughter of like a rich, wealthy family. She's actually from a very poor family. She lives with her best friend who is like upper middle class most of the time because her mom is super flaky. The book starts with her favorite show of all time ending and her being really emotional about it, of which I can understand Stranger Things is coming to an end here with seasons four and or five, so I get that. Her favorite show comes to an end and then when she goes to school she kind of reunites with her childhood best friend who used to have a crush on her and then she all of a sudden develops a crush on him but then he turns out to be dating her best friend's older sister and then she gets super jealous and she's decides to write this fan fiction about it, but it's so like sick and twisted. If anyone wrote fan fiction about like people in real life, it's already like Ugh, you know, but the fan fiction she actually wrote is so sick and twisted that if anyone ever came across it I would immediately suggest putting this girl in therapy of some sort I only got a brief glimpse of the fan fiction because I literally had to stop reading and there are some things I can't unsee with what she wrote It was so disgusting reading this and I was so shocked because so many people like I looked at my friends and like community reviews on Goodreads and they're like this is so like pro-feminist great stuff going on here and I read this and she's consistently slut shaming her best friend's older sister and yes the best friend's older sister is not the nicest person to the main character but that doesn't excuse like the blatant slut shaming over the fact that she's dating Scarlett's crush there was no reason for that so I ended up actually DNFing me this book and this is actually the only book I DNF'd in 2020 so truth to that I only DNF'd one book the next book I have here is Stargirl by Jerry Spinelli this is a story about this girl named Stargirl who comes into this small town one year and she kind of shakes up the status quo and of course the main character of this novel is absolutely infatuated with her. The only way I can describe this book is it feels like reading the first draft of a John Green novel. If you handed me Looking for Alaska, right, his first novel, first draft of it, I would imagine it would read something like Stargirl. That being said, like, I do enjoy John Green's novels. Yes, the Manic Pixie Dream Girl trope, obviously there can be major improvements to it. But with this book, something just felt like it was lacking and I 
can't like I don't know why there was something missing from it now this book is like under 200 pages so it is a very short time none of the characters developed not even really the main character and the book was honestly quite boring and I didn't really get anything out of it but that being said I feel like if I read this book when I was in elementary or middle school this would be like my favorite book of all time I would have based my personality around this book probably um, like I have with other books it felt like something was missing from the story and I wish I could have enjoyed it more than I did I really didn't like any of the characters in it either I hated the main character star girl was the only character I sort of liked but even then like she wasn't developed enough for me to actually really grow an attachment to her the other characters like basically didn't exist this is a rare case where I actually liked the movie more than the book so the next book I have here I'm actually really sad putting on this list and that is paper girls volume 6 as you guys know if you've been on my channel for any amount of time I absolutely adore this paper girls comic series this is the final comic in the series the reason it's on this disappointments list is because it just went in a direction that I didn't expect and the way it wrapped up just felt really anticlimactic this series is so epic and there's so many complex storylines that were developed it ended so anticlimactically and I felt really disappointed by how it ended and that's why it's on this list that being said I think I gave it like three stars so by all means it's definitely not the worst conclusion I've ever read but it just went in a direction that I didn't want it to go next we have the book I have given the lowest rating to on Goodreads I absolutely hate this book and nothing will ever make me change my mind and that book is Alex approximately by Jen Bennett I've been looking forward to reading Alex approximately since basically it came out it just sounded right up my alley with the main character being a film buff you have this online relationship thing it was promised to be like a you've got male young adult retelling so when I started reading this I just kind of wasn't in the mood for it I really didn't like the main character at first and so for like the first half of the book I was like whatever I'm probably gonna give this like two three stars and then halfway through there is this really triggering scene a PTSD scene that we discover about the character and it was really triggering to read it kind of reminded me of reading turtles all the way down it gets to a point where the book is difficult to read and I got to that point halfway through with this book because this scene was so triggering and I hadn't heard anyone on booktube talk about it no one gave a trigger warning and I was reading this and it was so awful because I was reading it for a readathon I wanted to finish it I would have DNF'd it but I wanted to finish it for the readathon I ended up skimming the rest of the book and it got really weird so the main character is 17 and the love interest is 19 two year age gap whatever not a big deal however it gets really creepy when you think about the fact that at the beginning of the novel the love interest makes this really weird comment to the main character about how like oh the legal age of consent here is 18 and you're like okay whatever like this is America it varies by state whatever and then later on in the book the two characters have sex and you're thinking to yourself like what the hell this creepy ass love interest made this comment at the beginning of the novel obviously making the assumption that they're not gonna do it right they're gonna follow the law no and it just felt so creepy and like I don't want to say it's pedophilic because there is only a two-year age gap this 19 year old dude is preying on this 17 year old girl and it just made me feel super uneasy reading that and this of course happens after the PTSD panic attack that happens halfway through so the whole thing was just downhill from there and I absolutely hate this book with a passion I would not recommend it to my worst enemy The next book on this list is none other than Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. How many of you guys read this book and thought, one, why am I suffering reading this because I've already read it, and two, this book really ruined my childhood because I thought both of those things multiple times while reading this book. There are so many problematic aspects about the Twilight series and I 100% recognize that. I did read this book in middle school. I wasn't very aware of the blatant racism in the Twilight series back when I read it. I have done more research on that and so I do recognize 
yes, this series is very problematic, but I did read this. I thought it would bring back some nostalgic middle school memories of me sitting alone at lunch reading this. And you know, the one day I did go to school in person this year, I did in fact read this alone during lunch, but it just sucked. <laughs> I know that there are people that want the entire series now from Edward's point of view, and I hope to God Stephanie Meyer does not do that. If she does do that, I know for a fact I'm not picking up a single one of those books. I don't think I'm going to pick up another Twilight book that Stephanie Meyer is going to write because isn't she going to write like a Jacob Renesme series? I have no interest in that, especially after reading this hot mess. Edward overthinks constantly and I know that Stephanie Meyer has said that before, but I didn't realize how much he overthinks and his constant inner monologue was so annoying. It got to a point where I just wanted to tell Edward to stop thinking for one minute, just for one minute. I hated being inside his head. It took Twilight and it ruined it for me. All the happy memories I had from reading it in middle school, gone. I really hate Edward. The other thing that annoyed me in this book, because Stephanie Meyer obviously got backlash for the very predator style relationship that Edward and Bella have, the fact that every time Edward thinks about Bella and thinks about like doing stuff with her, he's always like, it has to be her choice and it got so annoying like can you please stop with that i know it was kind of stephanie meyer's way of being like no but wait edward who died in the last pandemic is like pro-feminist or whatever because he's letting bella do whatever she wants if you're someone who enjoyed midnight sun i honestly don't know how you did it because i barely got through this book the next book on this list should be no surprise to anyone and that is after we collided i have a whole video where i read it so you don't have to so go ahead and check that out i did not give this book a rating. I didn't give after a rating because I knew going into it I wasn't going to like it and I didn't want my rating to affect Goodreads or whatever. So I did not rate it because I knew I wasn't going to like it. I don't really know what else to say about it. So the next book on this list I actually read fairly recently and that is Six, which is a Stranger Things comic. I don't know if these are canon or not. I'm assuming they're not. You guys need some context. So if you haven't watched Stranger Things, one of the aspects of the show is that there's this lab that does experience experiments on children who have various supernatural powers. And so in the show Stranger Things, they follow the 11th test subject known as Eleven. So this one follows Six, the sixth subject. I don't even know what this was, honestly. It was kind of like Hawkins Lab High School because there is like this weird romance between Six and Three. I would assume in an environment like Hawkins Lab, that would be banned. They would be tortured. Just thinking about like what Eleven goes through in the TV show. There's none of that. Even the guards mock them at some points. They're like, oh my god, there they are, going off again. It made no sense to me, especially in the environment they live in. And I was really looking forward to this because, and the last book I have here is one I literally read on New Year's Eve because I wanted to meet my Goodreads goal, and I did. That book is Laura Dean is Breaking Up With Me. So this is a graphic novel that was pretty popular two years ago now. I want to say it was popular about two years years ago. I know it received flack because of some of the problematic aspects to it. So that being said, if you do plan on picking it up, there are trigger warnings for abortion and abusive slash toxic relationships. But my main issue with the story was it just felt like it was lacking something. Most of the story follows Freddie as she's writing to this advice columnist about her roller coaster of a relationship with Laura Dean. And she's asking for advice like what she should do. That's that's it. That's the whole plot. She's just writing to this newspaper columnist about her relationship. That wasn't enough tension to keep me like fully interested and I wish there was more to this story. I wish we got to know Freddie's best friend a little bit more than we did and we had more of a side plot line with them. Freddie's friend just kind of comes and goes and comes and goes. I don't know, I just thought the plot was kind of boring and there could have been more higher stakes to it other than what is this columnist going to say to Freddie. All right, those are my most disappointing reads of 2020. I was actually surprised because I only had like, I think seven or eight books on this list in comparison to the fact I read 40 books. Yeah, it is about a fourth of the books I read. There have been years like in 2019 where I had more disappointments than favorites. I'm just glad this year was not like that. The majority of the books I read this year I actually really enjoyed. Um, but that being said, these are kind of the outliers and a lot of them were just disappointing. I didn't necessarily hate them, but they just went in a direction 
direction that I didn't want them to go in. Except for the case of after we collided and Alex approximately. That is all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down below some of your disappointing reads. Let me know if you agree with some of my opinions. Let me know if you disagree with some of my opinions because you know what? We are allowed to have a civil conversation. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I am doing my best to post a video daily and I will see you in the next video. Bye.